Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you an example of an integrator circuit, in particular, a summing integrator circuit. With other words, there's going to be two inputs and a single output, and the output should be the integral of the inputs of both of them. So there are the input voltages. The first one is a voltage varying source. We have 20 times the cosine of 2t millivolts, and the second one is a steady, not a steady state current, it's an increasing with time kind of voltage, where every second the voltage increases by one millivolt. And so what we know is that the output voltage, as a function of time, is equal to minus one over R1C1. So this would be well, in this case, there's only one capacitor, so we'll call it R1 times C. R1 is the first resistor, R2 is the second resistor, times the integral of the input voltage times dt. And of course, that was for the first source, minus 1 over R2 times C, times the integral of V input. This would be of the first and the second input voltage times dt. So this is v1 and I should call this input voltage so we'll call it input 1 and we'll call this input 2 makes it a little bit clearer to see what we're dealing with all right since we're given the input voltage so we can go ahead and integrate them so the v output let me go over here I'll probably need a lot of room v output is equal to minus 1 over the resistance which is 500 kilo ohms so 500,000 ohms multiplied times the capacitance which is 5 times 10 to the minus 6 ferrets like that and so we have um, okay that would be two and a half all right and we multiply that times the integral of the input voltage which is 20 times the cosine of 2t dt and that would be from 0 to t minus 1 over the resistance, which is 200 kilo ohms, times 5 times 10 to the minus 6. And then we integrate that times input voltage, which is T times dT from 0 to T. All right. Let's see here. What we need, we need a 2 dT so we can integrate that. So we're going to put the 10 over here and the 2 over there. So this is equal to uh, 1 over minus 1 over 2.5. Multiply this times 10 times the integral of the cosine of 2t times 2dt. So there's the differential of the function from 0 to t. Minus, that would be 1 times the integral of t dt from 0 to t. All right, now we're ready to integrate. The derivative of the sine is the cosine, so therefore the integral of the cosine is the positive sine. So 10 divided by 2.4 is 4. This is minus 4 times the sine of 2t evaluated from 0 to t minus t squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to t. Notice when you plug in the lower limit, the sine of 0 is 0, so we don't have to worry about the lower limit. And when you plug in the lower limit here, that goes to 0 as well, so we'll only keep the upper limits. So this is equal to minus 4 times the sine of 2t minus 1 half times t squared. And of course, that would be in volts, because I think we have, oh, millivolts, because we're given the millivolts initially. So the answer would be in millivolts. So this is the integral of the two input voltages. They're also summed together. And notice that in this case, the way it's connected, that the output voltage is going to be the negative of the input voltage. Integrated, of course. And that's the answer to this particular problem. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Notice that in each case, the output is written as the integral of the input voltage and we have the factor 1 over RC, where, of course, RC is the time constant of each of the two input circuits. And that's how we do that. 